Her doll doesn't have a chest, doesn't have an ass, and her cape is super tiny. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 5, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. Today, we are going to be looking at Episode 6, and the queens are tasked to create a look for both themselves and for their look-alike doll. That is right, we are having our second sewing challenge of the season, and the queens have their works cut out for them. This is both a design challenge, but also a branding challenge, and a little bit also of comedy because we know you've got to make Rude laugh. All in all, I'm excited to see what the queens have to offer. So let's get into it. First up, it's Tsunami Muse. And Tsunami Muse is coming in and giving us the Fashion Week Edition doll. She's coming out with a pair of blue bell bottoms, a sort of purple top, and these blue gloves. All in all, this kind of fits with what Tsunami thinks she is. She's always said that she is the fashion queen of the season and has tried to label herself that all throughout the season. Now, whether I agree or not, that is not the point. She's trying to build a brand and she's at least staying consistent with her message all along. This pants and top does remind me a little bit of her performance outfit from last week. That being said, it is well made. The fact is, is that pants are really hard to make. So anybody who's able to do pants, I am like, work, honey, work. She decided to go with the sort of this little bit of a bell bottom and it's giving you a little bit of that retro feel. Her doll definitely looks like her and definitely has a matching outfit. All in all, this is pretty good. Is it the best? No. But is it bad? Also no. And that is why, for Tsunami Muse, I'm gonna have to go with a soft. Oh. Next up, it's Safira Cristal, and Safira Cristal is giving us the Grand Dame Diva Metropolitan Opera Edition. Oof! That was a mouthful. So Sofia Cristal is coming out in her signature blue color and she's paired it with these big hair. I love that Safira is continuously using blue, but doing it in a way that I'm not getting bored of it. Honestly, I wonder how many people are realizing that she is going with blue because her name is Safira, which is a play on Sapphire, because she is doing it in so many different ways on so many challenges that you're not getting bored at all. And this outfit looks really nice. I mean, she was smart by choosing a very beautiful fabric to create this dress with. Now, is it the craziest, most elegant dress in the world? No, it is quite a simple dress. And a lot of the heavy lifting is done by the fabric. That being said, it is good. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this. The one thing I will say is that since we saw the doll first before we saw Safira, I was expecting her to come with a lot bigger hair because that's what her doll was showing. I do wish this whole outfit had a little bit more going on. She said in the workroom that she was actually trying to build a coat with this. And honestly, if she had a coat with this, this would have been like top, top, top notch. But because she didn't have the coat, it kind of fell middle of the road, but it was by no means bad. It was a fine dress. And as it was a fine dress, she is gonna get a fine rating. And that is why she's gonna get a soft bow. Next up, it's Plasma, and Plasma is giving us Passenger on the Pacific Edition. Now, Plasma is coming out in this little blue dress, and she's prepared it with this purple hair shawl and this purple waist tie. Now, I will say that I like that Plasma had a vision. She's definitely sticking to her old school roots and giving us this old school gown. So from a branding point of view, this works well. From a dress point of view, it's quite simple. I do like the head scarf. It does give me a little bit of I Dream of Jeannie, which is totally fine because that is within her era. Now the dress itself is really plain. It is, you know, safe. I would say, but, uh, but, and I feel like she could have got away with being very middle of the road had she not given her fabric to not one, but two queens. I think that the minute she shared her fabric with other queens, she was getting compared to those other queens. And that was a detriment to her because honestly, had she stuck to her guns and not shared the fabric, she could have got by with this one, honestly. It's not a bad dress at all. And it's got a pretty decent concept, to be honest. 
all in all, it is fine. And as it is fine, she is gonna get a fine reading, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a soft pop. Next up, it's Plain Jane, and Plain Jane is coming out giving you the aquatic edition. Now, this aquatic edition was a little bit of a stretch for Miss Plain Jane. You can see that she was struggling in the challenge and couldn't figure out her vibe or couldn't figure out her dress, and she ended up with this blue fabric that she just had to work with. Honestly, I was expecting a little bit of a different concept from Plain Jane, such as like the bimbo edition or the burger finger edition that would have been more on brand for her. But the one thing about Plain Jane is she made it work. Yes, she was stuck with this fabric, but she inserted her personality into the storyline and made fun of the fact that this was this aquatic edition that had really nothing to do any with anything. And that was so smart. You can see how Plain Jane's mind works. And the fact that she can turn some nonsense into genius is a testament to her branding and the fact that she knows her drag character really well. Now, going on to the dress itself, she decided to go with this bodysuit. Now, again, it looks like a dance costume. It looks like a figure skater costume. And she jokes about that. And she plays off of it to kind of like read the judges before they read her. And, and that is so intelligent. On top of it, she's got a lot of crystals all over the place to distract from the parts that are maybe not necessarily the best. But you know what is the best? Her fitting. And if you have a really good fit on a garment, it doesn't matter about the rest because it will look good. That's how people get away with wearing like AliExpress stuff while still looking a million bucks because it's just all about the fit. And this fit plain Jane body to a T. On top of it, she's paired it with this beautiful hair that really complemented everything and helped uh, bring this whole story together. All in all, I think this was quite genius. And that is why for Miss Plain Jane, she's gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Nymphia Wind, and Nymphia Wind is coming in in the Spring Banana Yellow Carpet Edition. Woof, that was a mouthful. First things first, Nymphia is sticking to her color, which is yellow. She's coming in in this yellow wig, this yellow dress made out of yellow tulle. Now, on her doll, she's got a yellow bow, while in person, she's got a little bit of a soft pink bow. I do prefer the pink over the yellow. I think that the, the pink does add a little bit of nice contrast and a lot of softness to the outfit, which the doll is sort of missing. The one problem I have is that the doll and her outfit are not exactly the same. They clearly use different fabrics and it would have been such an easy shift to make a little bow out of pink. So I'm wondering what the thought process was there. Did something go wrong at last minute? I'm not quite sure. Now, the, the other thing that kind of bothers me a little bit is the use of banana. Now, we know that banana is very much part of Nymphia Wynn's aesthetic and genre, and she loves to reference bananas, which I am 100% totally fine with. She's done some incredible banana outfits in the past. The issue I have is that this has nothing to do with banana. This is a yellow outfit. So if you're gonna call it a banana edition, Where's the banana? Even if she was holding a banana or she threw a banana or she looked like a banana split or something, then it would have made sense. In this case, it doesn't. And so I would have just lost the word banana because you're just opening yourself up to critique on that sense. That being said, this garment is beautiful. It is well made, it's well constructed. You can see she knows exactly what she's doing and she's got a really incredible eye for detail. All in all, it's amazing, and that is why, despite not getting the whole banana reference, it is still gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Morphine Love Dion, and Morphine Love Dion is coming out as the Miami Bimbo Edition. Morphine has decided to go with this hideous fabric, which is made out of this pink, purple, blues, but she decided to make it fashion by, by channeling her inner Jennifer Lopez and coming out with this low cut, high slit edition. It's definitely giving you Jennifer Lopez in that Versace outfit that is become so infamous. And honestly, despite hating this fabric, she was able to turn it out. So the fabric also with the colors and the vibe is definitely giving you Miami because of those like spring colors of those soft blues and soft pinks that we associate with sort of like Miami graphic culture. From a branding point of view, it works. It definitely screams Miami, it definitely screams morphine, and that's what you need to do. And the fact that she made it out of a bad fabric means nothing. Honestly, if this was done in a plain fabric, it would not be as good, so 
you know, and that's what, and that's what it's all about these sewing challenges. It doesn't matter what you work with, it's what you do with them. And what she did with them was pretty good. The part that I dislike though is the, her doll. Her doll does not look as fabulous as her. She looks like she's coming back from the club late at night while she, Morphine looks like she is going out on the town in bright, beautiful day, fully rested. So they don't match exactly, but they're close enough, let's be honest. All in all, I think that this suits Morphine from a branding perspective, but it also works from a design challenge perspective. All in all, it's pretty good, and that is why she's getting a... Next up, it's Maya Iman LePage. And Maya Iman LePage is coming out in this Queen of Flips edition. She is wearing this yellow and pink bodysuit with this little capelet and this big blonde hair. First, let's talk about the branding. Queen of Flips, so smart. That's her Instagram handle. She's known as being the flipping queen. So this totally works from a branding perspective. We know exactly who that is. Now, the problem I have with this is that the Queen of Flips and this outfit just don't go together. I don't see how one leans into the other. In her videos, as well as in her previous runways, she's always given us like sort of like flappery, flowy things. So it was a little bit weird to see her in a head to toe bodysuit. The choice of color was also not the best. I would have chosen yellow because Maya has done like two or three yellow outfits thus far, but I mean, you work with what you have. Ultimately, the, one of the big issues is that the fabric looks so cheap. And because the fabric looks cheap, it makes the garment look cheap. Now, I'm not saying that you, can, you can't make cheap fabric look expensive, you definitely could, but Maya clearly said doesn't have that great of sewing skills. So she would have been better off working with a little bit more expensive, a little bit more crazier fabric because she could have got away with a lot more. That's kind of what Safira did. She took one of the nicest fabrics that she had and made a dress out of it. And even though it was a plain dress, it worked. This is a plain bodysuit, but because it's made out of plain fabric, it doesn't work. Now let's talk about her doll. Her doll looks nothing like her. Her doll doesn't have a chest, doesn't have an ass, and her cape is super tiny. She's also got really flat hair comparative to what Maya is wearing. All in all, they don't match. And that's a little bit of a problem. On the runway, she keeps talking about how she is the queen of flips and that is the flipping of her doll, but she's not selling this queen of flip edition. One or two flips would have gone a long way and the judges called her out on this and they were right to do so because I was thinking the exact same thing. If, if you have a shitty outfit, sell it on the runway and she didn't really sell it to the best of her ability, in my opinion. All in all, this was a miss for me. It could have been a lot better, and that is why she's getting a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Megami, and Megami is coming out as the native New Yorker edition. She's coming in from head to toe in sequence fabric in this sequence bodysuit with this little capelet and all of the orange accessories, the orange coffee cup, the orange notepad, and the orange little crown. Her doll is matched exactly the same and even has her signature eyes. Now, the one big issue I have with Megami this season is that Megami is getting lost in the crowd and her branding exercise here wasn't that strong. She is the New York edition. We've seen so many New York Queens be a New York edition. Personally, I wish she would have went more in the cosplay because that's what sets her apart from every other queen. She could have been the cosplay edition and did a little bit more of a character. That being said, let's look at the garment. The garment is so well made. It is a catsuit with a cape and it is done in a really nice fabric, which elevates the whole garment. If you go back to like Maya I'm on the page, she also did a catsuit, but the difference is so different just from the different choice of fabric and probably the fit, but we won't get into that one. She said that the colors are based on the state colors of New York, which I honestly didn't know that the state colors of New York were blue and orange, but you know what? Good on ya. I like that little additional information and a little bit of that additional education for us non-American queens. On top of it, she when she's uh, during her speech, she talks about her coffee cup, she talks about her sign, and she's got a little peekaboo uh, with, uh, and she's got a little message at the end with her forget about it, which I thought was quite cute and smart. All in all, this is 
pretty well executed and pretty well made and I kind of love it. I think that Megami is a little bit of a sleeper queen and could be the next big thing. Honestly, I don't feel like she had a big miss all season yet. She's just not shining the way we need her to shine to win the season. So uh, let's see how the rest of the seasons go. But for this one, I'm going to go ahead and give her a bow. Next up is Geneva Carr, and Geneva Carr is giving us the Daintiest Doll Texas Edition. Geneva Carr is coming out with this light blue fabric dress with this color piece and this white skirt. She's also got little white shoulder pieces to give you a full look. Now, let's first talk about the branding. It doesn't make any sense. Geneva Carr all season has talked about being the Mexicana queen and how she's proud of her heritage and how she is so Mexican. So why did she decide to go with the Texas edition? Yes, we understand she is from Texas, but she's never played that all season. So this one came out of left field. On top of it, she is her name is Geneva Carr, which is a play on car, like an actual car. So I Surprised she didn't use her tagline and go with like the Vroom Vroom edition and been like some sort of driver car. She had so many avenues to go down and she went down this one, which felt like completely out of left field and just didn't work for me. You can see that she was struggling on the branding side. And to make matters work, she was also struggling on the construction side. In the workroom, she was started off working on some red fabric, which I thought was a much better idea, probably giving you that Latin flavor, but switched it to this baby blue for whatever reason, and that's where I think things went completely off rail. She tried to make it work, but she didn't do a great job of it. The dress itself is very middle of the road, very mediocre, but because she had not so great branding and not so great doll, it also like hindered her overall performance. All in all, this wasn't the best showing for Miss Geneva Carr, and that is why she's gonna get a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Dawn, and Dawn is giving you the Galactic Empress Edition. She's coming out in this head to toe silver dress with this silver hood, and this blue dress on top of it is definitely giving you layers and intergalactic space edition. Now, I will say that I was surprised that Dawn went down this route. I definitely thought that Dawn was going to go down more of her animal creature versions as opposed to this one. We haven't seen Dawn do space, but she goes on to say that Dawn is just character and loves a little bit of everything. She's a little bit of elf, she's a little bit of that. And although this was a little bit of a stretch for me, I also don't hate it. I think this was really smart. All in all, the aesthetic was very Dawn, and I think that in the sort of creature world, space does fit into it somehow. So I, I buy it. Had another queen done space, I think it would have been a harder sell. But for Dawn, who is always doing like weird things, space seems up there with something she would want to do. The dress itself was really cool. She decided to go with more of this haute couture aspect to things, which good on her. She can sew and she can sew well and so she decided to push herself and she also stood out being the only queen wearing silver which was a such a smart thing because you had nobody else to compare it to so she was obviously going to be the best one in that in that category. All in all this was well thought through, well well designed and made sense and so overall for Dawn she's getting a five. And finally, we have Q, and Q is giving us Fantasy Edition. She's coming out in this copper color with head-to-toe copper. She's got a copper corset, a copper headpiece, and a copper cape. First up, I'm going to say this looks fantastic. You can see that Q is a master seamstress, designer, extraordinaire. I guarantee that every big drag queen is trying to hit her up to get something made because she is just spectacular and this outfit looks incredible. The choice of going with a copper was so smart. I personally wouldn't have thought of it, but it was smart because it is so different from everybody else where everybody was going with loud colors. So she decided to go in with these metallic and a little bit of a different vibe. I don't necessarily see the fantasy edition because fantasy could very well be anything. So it is not specific enough for me. I would have preferred her to go with sort of like a fashion edition or something like that because that's who Q is. That being said, this outfit is definitely giving me a little bit of steampunk, which I love, but also a little bit surprising. And maybe it's just the color choices. 
All in all, this outfit is incredible and the doll looks just as good as her. From a branding perspective, it missed the mark for me a little bit, but I'm gonna forgive it all because the outfit is just so incredible. So if you haven't guessed, for Dawn, it is absolutely gonna be a bath. And that is it for this week's episode. For a design challenge, I must say, the queens really turned it out, especially comparative to some other seasons. If you wanna go see my episode on Drag Race Belgique, who also had a sewing challenge, it's a very different story. But enough about that, let's get into the reason why you messy bitches are here. You messy bitches are here because you wanna know who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So this week, my drab of the week has to go to... Miss Geneva Carr. All in all, this missed both from a branding perspective and from a fashion perspective. It was just all over the place and I just didn't love it. And that's why she got my Drab of the Week. And who had my Fab of the Week? Well, my Fab of the Week this week has to go to... Q. That is right. Although Q uh, struggled a little bit on the branding side of thing, her outfit was just so much more superior than everybody else that I had to give it to her. It was just incredible. And you know what? I think this is the first time in my whole Fab and Drab history where I chose the bottom and top queens exactly as the judges. Usually I have a little bit of a contradictory opinion, but this week I am fully aligned. But the real question is, do you agree or disagree with my thoughts or even the judges' thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. But that is it for this week's episode, y'all. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.